Good evening, everyone. My name is Sam Nasser, and this is the Azure Cleveland User Group. A little bit about the group. Uh, we meet every second Wednesday. The meetings are free of charge and open to the public, and we cover all topics related to Azure, including infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software as a service. Uh, you can find the meeting information posted on meetup.com at the link listed at the bottom of the slide. Some general information, please keep in mind, participation is highly encouraged. Uh, there is no such thing as a stupid question, except the one not being asked. And uh, kindly ask that uh, when not speaking to mute your microphones just to prevent any background noise. Also, we like to keep it casual, but organized. So jump in with any questions or comments at any point in time. But at the same time, we wanna allow enough time for our presenter to go through all the slides and the demos. Lastly, the presentation will be recorded and will be posted on YouTube with the link provided uh, shortly afterwards. So for tonight's feature presentation, we have uh, George Bryan presenting on the length and breadth of Power BI developer ecosystem. George comes to us from, uh, is it Minneapolis, George, or uh, whereabouts in Minnesota? Uh, St. Paul. St. Paul, very good. Yeah. He specializes in architecture, data engineering, and Power BI. He's an active member of the data community in both US and Europe, and he has worked primarily in Azure, collaborating with Microsoft and other partners. So with that, uh, let me turn it over to George, and I will make you presenter. I'll go, oh, wrong one. So I'll go straight into this. Um, I'm gonna give the, the context of, um, I have to give the, the little context of Fulton. That's, uh, it's, a, it's a company based out of Minnesota, um, data analytics, everything in between, all the stuff. I'm not going to bore you with it. Um, frankly, this is this only coming up because it's uh, I own it with someone else called Robert. Um, so just having people be aware of where I'm from, how I'm coming at it is always good context. But I'm not a salesman, so I'm not going to drum that in in any kind of way. One thing that is worth pointing out, though, is, you know, I have contact details if anyone ever has follow-up questions. I have all these things. Um, you can put that on YouTube. That will make me popular. It's all the good stuff. Okay, so, you know, kind of as I referenced, um, I, I like that you've already said a lot of the things that I normally say in your slides. Uh, in, in, uh, participation is encouraged. Questions are good. I love me a question. Um, periodically, I may sort of reserve the right to to say that I know the content's coming, so uh, bear with me, we're gonna get there. Um, but otherwise, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely fine with tangents. I work on the fly a bit too often anyway. Um, one of the ways I do work is sort of when I first did this presentation, it was um, basically I, I created it that day because I'd forgotten that it was gonna happen. And so in a space of two hours, I built something and then just made it up as I went along. But because that went well, I then went back, cleaned it up, made it good, and turned it into an actual thing. Luckily, that presentation was an internal one to the company, so we can we can let it go. But otherwise, um, yeah, it's actually turned into one of my favorite ones to do. So again, let's let's hope it's enjoyable and we can go on with it. So the question um, I'm basically posing here is, what is a Power BI developer? Um, you sort of see around in the industry all these different things. Um, so when you think when you think of a Power BI developer, um, what skill sets are we are we thinking of? Um, and that's an open question. You can add any as we go along. I think fundamentally, Power BI you think in visualizations. People want to see something pretty because up to now they've just been seeing either lines of lines of stuff in an excel spreadsheet um, lines of code in a database bringing out an output or whatever it is that, that they've got so the very concept of, of what power bi is about is to visualize any of those things now one of the skill sets inherent in that is you you want to create some measures because you're, you're aggregating everything you want to see everything in various different ways so as a power bi developer you, you're pretty consistent by saying that dax is going to be something um, the expression language involved with Power BI is, you know, there's there's a lot of things you can do. By all means, you could um, you can really span the gambit and just pretty much do anything you like with the data. As we'll get into later on, there are going to be questions of should you do that all the time? 
I'm not the man to answer that, but for now, that's that's kind of what it's at. Um, one of the things that, that consistently, the, the, you know, some of these buzzwords, the, the, I hate buzzwords, by the way, they, they drive me mad. So if anyone asks me about data fabric, I'll tell you it's the same thing everyone's been doing for the last however many years, but someone's decided to put some stuff on it. Now, it's not as simple as that. There is some stuff, but the buzzwords around Power BI are, are generally going to be a bit different there. Um, you know, have your data tell a story. So storytelling. And so one thing I did learn from one of our employees is that, honestly, um, you know, when if you're asking the right questions, this, the, the things that you kind of produce really can and do tell a story. And it's pretty fascinating how you can sort of guide the conversation, certainly in demos, to do that. The real world application of, of storytelling is, is very different. Really, you're just looking for those anomalies to look at and act upon. But that, that's ultimately what storytelling boils down to. So as a skill set, it's nice if you're able to create visualizations that give you the ability to tell those stories. Um, analysts, you don't just walk in, create some pictures and say, here you go, great. You have to kind of do the work to get the data there. That's that's part and parcel of everything. I think that's, I don't think I'm coming up with anything particularly magical with, with that analysis. Modeling. Modeling is a fun one. Because I mean I don't know I don't know um, I don't really know anyone in this room I don't know anyone out in the uh, in a lot of places but there is more than one concept behind modelling that people follow I know I know the ones that I follow um, and I know why I do it that way um, I know there's other mentalities that that people can apply to modelling but the fact is modelling is a thing that that's part of it not everyone that does Power BI is going to do modelling but it's certainly a key piece and on everything that that goes there. But when, you, when it boils down to it, what is a Power BI developer? And the, the, the simple answer is you are, a Power BI developer is makes it so the guy with a question mark on his screen doesn't have to sit there and be stressed about it anymore because the stuff's in front of him, it's all automated, it's good, helps him perform his business function or her or them or they, whatever. Um, and it's given them some insight as to either to what's happening what's happened or ideally what, what's going to happen in the future that proactive look is sort of the the, the stuff so bearing in mind the title of this is the length and breadth of the power BI ecosystem it seems like i might have already completed the presentation so i don't know i don't know where to go from here however um where this presentation ultimately came from was sort of you know it came from the concept that a lot of people are being hired at various different rates, various different salaries, all that stuff. That it's not a dialogue around that, but it's but it did make me curious. So what I actually went and did was I went and um, I ran, did a random Google search for Power BI jobs in Minnesota because that's where I am. That's that's what I'm looking for. And what I found what I found was relatively fascinating. And so, you know, I, I took a few of them here. There was some, there was some monstrous things that happened in there, but I enjoyed this little one in the middle here. Cannot require sponsorship. That's fair enough. You might want a few other items in there, but if that's, if that's your minimum criteria, fine. That's all good. Um, but I started seeing things as I went through. So two years of Power BI experience, fair enough. Um, knowledge of SQL Server, um, SSRS, SSIS, SQL development, ETL, all this stuff, warehousing and data mining, great. <laughs> Seems a lot, but there we go. Um, strong variant experience, developing, publishing, and scheduling Power BI reports as per the business requirements. If you start reading through these, they start getting a bit repetitive. Um, familiarity and experience in SQL, fun. But then some of them get really quite entertaining. So this one on the right here. You know, I'm not quite sure that there is anyone in the world that has, you know, unless you're the most seasoned 60 year veteran of data with all this stuff and where you've always kept up to date with things, there's PBI, there's Power BI and DAX. 
There is also business intelligence to stack, including Power BI and all the things. Oracle and HANA. Strong experience in those. JavaScript, CSS, and other Java libraries. I don't know, I don't know about anyone else, but you know, I'm pretty good at what I do, and I, I like data, but I don't know anyone that can do all of this stuff. It seems like a mad set of qualifications to ask for. Um, and I love it how, love it when they start repeating with SAP HANA and other stuff. Um, so what so what I really started thinking as I was reading through this was, yeah, you know, there are some consistencies that just span all of them. Um, bearing in mind we're talking about a Power BI developer, all of a sudden a Power BI developer needs to know SSRS and SSIS, which are not really anything to do with Power BI, familiarity with e ETL processes. And then as we go as we go through this other one, it's optimize advanced SQL queries and large complex data sets. Knowledge of SQL, SSRS, SSIS again. There was just a theme going through everything. Five to eight years experience of these tools. Uh, Power BI hasn't even been around eight years at this point, so it's a stretch there. But on data warehousing and data integration and the more you start looking at everything, Azure, more SSRS, business intelligence, I mean, it's just starting to ask the question of, well, everyone's, everyone's in the market looking for a Power BI developer, yet no one is mentioning barely any of the skills actually applied to Power BI, but instead to a whole ecosystem of other skills that we most people just haven't got the experience of. Power BI being as old as it is, a majority of Power BI developers being the age that they are um, and sort of like the, the, the skill set that happens, this this seems to take us down a different path, a path I wasn't expecting. It really, it, I really wasn't expecting to see it. So then we're back to the question of what is a Power BI developer? Now, if you go to this analyticsinsight.net, which is pretty good at defining what these things are, a Power BI developer is hired to design and develop BI reports for providing insights to improve decision making. I think we all, I think that's what we're all assuming this would be. But then it goes on. So the role of the developer requires them to have wide knowledge of, I guess that's meant to be other, other business intelligence. It's a direct copy, so this isn't me. Other business intelligence, data integration, data warehousing, mod, it just starts listing everything, you know, that you don't expect it to be a Power BI developer for. Um, now, wide knowledge is ambiguous. I mean, just having familiarity with it, with it is, is probably enough. But none of these, none of these roles that people are asking for or requesting are actually sort of giving that answer. They're they're all saying, "I don't want a developer. I want a I want a flipping unicorn, you know, <laughs> with a with some beautiful horn and something and and all that stuff." So. So that brings me to the sort of like, this is the length and breadth part of, of what I'm really trying to get to. Excuse me, I'm, I forgot my medication. I'm a happy man. And so this, is, this isn't an architecture diagram necessarily. So I'm not trying to, to, to put any architecture pieces in place, but it is sort of the, you know the kind of ecosystem that, that anyone on the debt platform side in, in one way or another is going to come across so it does involve ssis or data factory or both if you've got um you know some migration happening it's got your data lakes it's got your sql server your synapse your data bricks and evidently there's a whole host of other tools and, and platforms i could put on here but i'm not going to put them all down no, that, that's just kind of pointless um but you get the idea, Azure Analysis Services, and then the Power BI pieces at the end. So when we do go through all those descriptions, we're really looking at, you know, we're requesting someone to do this, but we're expecting them to know all of this other data, data platform, data engineering stuff. That's how I'm reading it. I mean, I don't know if I'm reading it wrong, but that's, those are the words that they're using. And so, okay, fair enough. So what I kind of wanted to do next was, was to break this down. 
I wanted to break it up into different roles to make it tangible. Now, of course, there's there's caveats and all these things that that's just part and parcel of whatever we're going to do. But ultimately, I want to break it down. So I'm going to start with, at, at the end with the Power BI admin. Now, just to administer Power BI in the first place, and, and bearing in mind there's, there's Power BI Premium now, there's Power BI Pro, there's Power BI Premium per user. There's loads of different flavors. There's, there's, there's an on-premise version, there's the cloud versions, there's, there's um, licensing requirements um, or standalone licenses. All of these things are something that people need to sort of have a rough idea about if they're going to be a Power BI admin because they, they then have to understand how to, you know, the workspace administration. User and, user and AAD administration is, is always going to be part of, of a company because you have to control people seeing stuff that's just part and parcel so then when you get into that works the workspace side there is the um creating and managing the workspace the monitoring of the apps making sure that anything's going through if you have premium there's the pipelines there's the the development pipeline pipelines that, that help you bring it from through from a to z um on the gateway side if you're using anything on premise then you need the gateway you need to make sure all those pieces are in place which means you have to make sure that the right people have got their names on there. You need to monitor those things. If something breaks, you're the first point of contact. So a Power BI admin in their own way, in their own right, is it's in, in a larger company, that's that's its own full-time job. There, there is no other work that will go with that, apart from some maybe some complementary security-based work or, or network infrastructure type stuff. But out, out the box, a Power BI administrator is, is, is a whole sequence of its own things. Then it comes to the Power BI report builder. Um, now you'd think conceptually that, again, back, back to the first slide. So you've got your visualizations, um, reporting visual concepts, all the things that we went through before. But there are additional skill sets that, that, that people can have there. There's the theme creation, um, where if you have your, your I think it's a JSON script which you can embed in there. You can have your color scheme, you can have your all your design abilities, so your your logos, your and just sort of the, the visual concepts around around the science side of it, which is always a good thing to know. I mean, because science at a very high level kind of dictates that we start top left and we work our way around. That's that's kind of how our, our, our minds look at things. That's that's how we we have that. So when it comes to having certain visuals and, and slices, you want to pick very carefully where you put them, and that's what the Power BI report developer that, that's worth their salt really sort of get involved with. There is going to be the modeling <coughs> modeling elements as well. You're going to be creating your measures in DAX. You're going to be making, make, making sure the relationships are appropriate and good so that the user experience for anyone using the data set works and it, and it does for all your visualizations, your, your data type management because who wants to add A, B, and C together? That makes no sense. And obviously there's the whole Power Query, M Query, um, language query stuff that really helps, you know, developers do a lot of that work these days. I remember when Power BI first came out, one of the, one of the presentations I did way back then, and, you know, I might rekindle it because it was just fun, was, you know, you can split the columns, you can trim it, you can do all this stuff. But now it's it's point and click stuff that people can do. And up until that point, I've been doing it in SQL for the last 10 years. And so it's just fascinating that this skill set that I had acquired could now be replicated by someone with a mouse clicking about a little bit. And I thought that was truly wonderful. But yeah, so that's the Power BI report developer. Now I've I've coined this term the Power BI engineer. That's uh you know, bold of me. It's not catching on, but I'll, I'll keep trying. Um, and that's when you have that Power BI developer in all that report building stuff, but they have a, a little bit extra for them, or they have, um, or their skill set uh, may evolve slightly differently based upon actual uh, modeling concepts. Now, there are many visualization tools out there. Um, obviously, there's Tableau and there's a few others. Um, Power BI is really the, the primary one that really goes for the dimensional modeling as a, as a centralized concept. Um, and so a true Power BI engineer understands that a good model is built to scale. It's built, it's built to handle data transformations without being, you know, 
excessive. You can you, you have more SQL knowledge generally if SQL is the source, of course, um, because it helps you get data prepared in order to come into there. And that's where the scalability pieces come in. So if you're using lots and lots of Power Query and lots and lots of complex DAX, that's all good. But when the model starts growing, that's when things are going to come unstuck a little bit. A, a, what I would call a true Power BI engineer understands that and so thinks about things in a slightly different way. They want to create some flatter, easier to use tables so that when it is things are loaded in, you have those concepts. There probably is for both of these. The, the um, I always use the word composite because I always forget how you say it in America. Um, compos composite? Yeah, that's right. That's the one. So, so I mean, the understanding the concepts behind that and, you know, understanding how those indexes work because with, 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 with the composite model, um, having the database index, <coughs> excuse me, having the database indexes on, on the right columns in the right ways really does help performance on those things as well. And, and understanding the way the, you know, the, the preloaded tables versus the direct query tables, understanding how those conceptually work and how they go through, that, that's quite an important element in that. And then, then we come back to the data engineer himself or themselves. So this is, this is when it starts just getting away from Power BI. Because, I mean, ultimately, these are the skill sets that a lot of the a lot of those job postings were, were, were putting in. But the fact is, this is very much not really Power BI skill set orientated pieces. Because when you start doing your ETLs, your, your, your SSIS and your, your data factory and, and any of the data movement tools that you can use, that that moves away from 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 Power BI and development. It evolves it into something else. It, it's the whole way you think about things isn't the same. Now, having dimensional modeling is still key because when you're creating, when your data engineer is creating everything in order to get the tables to the to the report developer and 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 with the dimensional modeled side, having the context of what it is that the end game is that you're trying to get to is still very important. Because if you try and create a dimension without understanding what a dimension does and how it integrates with everything else, it's not really going to you're going to struggle with building that until you have that context. But the fact is, you're, it's a different skill set, and it's generally done by people that, that don't want to do it. Sorry. So, you know, when it comes to it, you can have people that do sort of that, that whole front end side. You can have people that do the back end side. And you are going to have people that kind of do a bit of both. But in general, when you have those people that do a bit of both, they're not going to be the best either. And for a smaller company, that, that's fine. For a larger company, you do need to break it up and differentiate by, by different groups. So a couple of additional roles I threw down. I put et cetera because I'm hoping you can all help me because uh, that's, that's just how I roll. But additional roles and functions. Data flows are now a thing. That's uh, definitely part of um, ETL as well. When you uh, consider the data flows are, are a big part of data factory these days, but you can also use data flows outside of data factory in Power BI and is a tangible skill set that, that some people desire. There's the whole Power App and Power Platform pieces with, with Power Automate, all that stuff. Now Power Apps are a lot of fun. And they integrate in directly into a Power BI report as well. So all the good stuff. Um, back on the administration side, there is Power BI embedding, where you can just, um, obviously there's the, the simpler ones such as SharePoint and, and Teams, but obviously you, you, can, you can embed these in your website, you can embed these all over the place. Um, are there any other additional roles or functions I've missed? I, I know in the organization that I'm in now, they've, they've also filled the role of developer, which is kind of odd, and not very well at that, but They've done what now? They've filled the role of developer? Yep, absolutely. Usually you have front end stuff, especially when you're embedding the the Power BI reports into the UI and stuff. So Yeah, embedding is one of the honestly, embedding is one of the most those really annoying things that is just hard to do. Because 
I don't think that there's very rarely ever in the whole embedding ecosystem that's out there's very rarely two scenarios the same. And when you when you have um, say if you have a, da a database that exists in you know that there's a product um, let, let's use SAP you, you do an implementation on Power BI against SAP but large in large part you you know there's going to be some similarities between each SAP environment you know there's going to be similarities between um, Dynamics, CRM, whatever it's called now, customer engagement, um, and all that stuff. You know, there's going to be consistency with with embedding an app. It's really hard to create documentation around such a thing because it every scenario is different. Every every um, every JavaScript where the things are all embedded just just evolves, and nothing nothing ever is the same. So it's one of the most, uh, in my opinion, one of the most um, underserved markets because it's the most irritating one to, to to really sort of parallel and, and make make your own because you can say you're good at it but then the next time you come across something it's just different and so it makes it really annoying anyway i love my tangents carry on sorry another one nope hey in that case um so i'm bringing it back to here should a Power BI developer be all of these things? Gotta say no. Probably, probably going to go with the on the side of. Um, and, and I think about it, I would probably already kind of summarise that that piece. Back in the day, and this is where my roots came from. And back in the day, I was um, an SSRS and an SSAS and an SSIS developer. By all means, I wasn't um, a master of any of those. If anything, it's a uh, well. I was definitely very well versed on the SSIS side and the SSRS side, less so on the SSIS. That's, you know, I don't think there's any way that one person can be amazing at all of those consistently. There was always people that knew more than me on all, on all of those facets, just because there was that that much stuff going on on all of them. Pieces <coughs> to do. Um, but as as the clouds come along and as we've sort of gone into that into that path, there's there's just no there's just no way that anyone can be a master of everything anymore. But we've found, we found even people back in the day that, that, that were in the same position as me have found their focus on, on something around the ecosystem, which they really kind of had to, not had to, but naturally just fallen towards. Um, they still have the context of everything else in, in the same way I do now. I understand Power BI. I used to be good at it. Now I've, I just get shown up by people all the time on how bad my actual Power BI is now. But, you know, I've, I've, I've massively focused on the engineering side, and I think that's generally how everyone seems to go. Um, so, so when you when you when you have the ecosystem like this, it, it's very easy to say that, you know, in your in your job posting, I want someone that does all of this. Maybe someone that has a bit of context of all this of all these things, but you, you, someone's going to get caught short somewhere, even for the most basic job job pieces that are there. And that's that's just kind of how it is. I don't know how we can get away from that. But so what really needs to happen again is on the recruitment space, people need to start realizing that what is it you actually want from the person that you're hiring or that you're trying to hire? Because you're 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 casting a broad net and, and catching a shark in your in your fish in there with you. Fifteen thousand different types of fish and we need to stop fishing the oceans. But either way, um another tangent I shouldn't go on. But yeah, so that's that's kind of they, they shouldn't be everything. And honestly, I'm not sure how they can be. But one observation that in particular and it gets a little more serious on this part. So additional conclusions are are easy to draw. But, but one thing that I have I've observed is um and, and it's worth referencing of of I've given I've given this presentation to an audience of DBAs who sit there and just clap, and 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 other people that aren't DBAs that, that come from the front end, um, and they don't have quite the same reaction. But what what I've what I've observed over the last few years is over time, um, there, there's become an imbalance, and that imbalance is, is basically orientating itself around um, back in the day. Reporting tools were things like Crystal Reports, SSRS. That was what people did their reporting in. That's where people got their visualizations in. Now, in order to create those things, 
you needed to have a, a pretty large element of development uh, skill sets, SQL in particular, MDX if you're really a sadist, and um, and some of these other pieces in order to create your your the reports that that take longer to build and aren't anywhere near as functional. But but what that does do is it gives people that are being trained in that ecosystem the ability to um, get good training in is your SQL accurate? Are you doing your feasibility testing? Is everything, are you creating Cartesian? Do you have good joins? All of the fundamental pieces that, that, that come around governance and testing, um, when it comes to um, the, the trend where people are starting at the front now, and people are creating their Power BI reports, they're doing a lot of those things, um, but then they're working their way backwards. So what, what, what has happened, what I have observed tangibly is that a lot of those fundamentals um, over in the industry as a whole have started to slip. Testing is not something that, that people are doing on their code before they present anything. Um, governance is something that, yes, the governance is, is a little more tangible um, because you know, if, you, if you're going to control your organization's um, stuff, then it's still there. But it's still a conversation that, that is now um, front and center, hence things like purview, hence things, um, you know, data governance is, is, that's a buzzword I can kind of get behind because it is pretty tangible and it, and it is something that people need. Security is, 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 is concerning at the moment, but the biggest one definitely has to be compliance. So from, from a compliance perspective, I was trained absolutely thoroughly to um, keep the reports in your important environment, do everything there. If you bring the data out of the reporting environment, then that's data at rest. That means it's gone from the company's perspective of um, of security, and you've bought it locally. So now that's on you. If you if you lose anything, anything happens there, then you're the one that's liable, not not the company, because you've extracted it from there and you put that data at rest. These concepts. Um, have have gone away and and what what's kind of cool is when i first did this presentation it was i was actually kind of bleak about it. Uh, i was kind of sitting there thinking well yeah there are a lot of there is it has gone down and, and it's continuing to go down at this point now though i'm i'm starting to see with with the more governance conversations um uh, more of these things being talked about and starting to be more open the balance is slowly starting to redress, but it really comes down to, to, to everyone that, that that goes to these things and sees these things and 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 not being quiet about it. If if you're it's the same with anything, if your natural reaction is, well, I can send them that that Excel spreadsheet in an in an Outlook email or whatever it is I send by, then am I am I am I questioning myself and in, in the right things? Is it already in Power BI and I can just say, well, go there because it's already there? Those kinds of things. Um, so at this part, I, I genuinely am always curious to hear people's opinions on on this stuff, because I don't know if it's just I'm in a I'm in a I'm in a container and I'm and I'm missing things, but I'm I'm very curious to hear anyone else's opinion on on that whole concept where of have these things been slipping and or am I just making it up? I'm not too sure about the testing, but the governance and compliance maybe and and I, I know we put a lot of emphasis on on the security part of it um especially with roles-based security for who can view and who can you know run these reports and, and look at these reports that are generated so i don't i don't necessarily have to know where where you work but what industry do you do you work in ah healthcare yeah, yeah so, so, so. Security and compliance slapped in your face daily that's yeah. uh well, I love I love working with healthcare. It just what I've found is the the process just means that you know every now and then you might be able to um, you might be able to get something done that month as long as someone is allowed <laughs> to get that far. You know, it, Occasionally, yes. That way. I've been in companies where I've had to log in to five different login security paths just to get to a database. That, that has security on it as well and it's just like well i get it are you going a bit far i don't know um 
it's hip is very very front and center but you know so healthcare is, is a different example by all means being in being in minneapolis, being near minneapolis and uh knowing how many of the medical um are over here and um in fact you've got you've got aquan children's over there yeah uh yeah well our, our part of the industry is really um long-term care um you know like um nursing homes and, and older things like that you know that for older people so we don't really deal exactly with the hospitals but hip is still the same thing yeah it's uh, it's it's it works the same way and it's still the same stringent stuff outside yep. of the the medical industry um it is a, oftentimes a different story especially with the <clears throat> so when you think about obviously enterprise size and corporation and the size of the company um, when you do go to those enterprise orientated ones and the, those large hospitals they're all very large companies uh, part of a conglomerate usually or something like that you know these these definitely apply less to those by all means testing and, right. and making sure the data is right that's uh, and that, that's a lot of times down to process and sometimes there might be some struggles there but in that industry there's really not a question uh, for a lot of this when it comes to um, when it comes to sort of any of those small to mid size and, and getting into the larger companies, it's absolutely front and center because they're they're the ones that um, that, that sort of they're, they're just not trained to think about it in that way. And so when they do bring someone in to do that, it's just less less of a of, of a requirement in things as 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 you as you'd want it to be. Um, I I feel like I'm I'm relatively in a position where I, where I can speak a little bit to it just because. I don't do as much development as I used to do. I, I, I monitor and I see and I, and I have conversations with lots of different companies over, over a month. And so I see a lot more breadth on the scenarios and the situations that are around. So, and, and those are the observations. That I, I, that's where I pull the ob observations from. Obviously, I'm not going to name anyone because that's naughty, but um, that, that's kind of where that, that perspective comes from. Cool. So the other one kind of speaks to that as well. So scale. Now, with scale, that's a different conversation because we've gone through that whole list of, uh, of things. We've gone through what are the admin, a developer, engineer, all of those different roles look like. Um, but of course, it's going to fundamentally come down to the size of the company and the size of um, and the size of the task at hand and therefore the bandwidth for to hire one two three twenty fifty people in order to facilitate the, the release of, of anything coming out of it data any any of that ecosystem so when i say when i say that these are different roles you are going to have some hybrid and, and interaction between those things of course you are so the the power bi um, admin is most likely in a smaller company also going to be the, the the one that does the development and the modeling um there might be it might be someone more on the data side that does the modeling and and a little bit of the reporting and leaves leaves away the admin side and then they could work together it could be an individual all these things are relative to to that whole sort of evolution as a company and what it is that they're, that they're looking to do um and one of the things that, that is important is the knowledge set that happens has to has to travel with the size of company. So when you have when you do have that one individual, um, you don't even necessarily have a database in the company you're working at. There's just a lot of Excel spreadsheets. Maybe you stick your power beyond on that. You do your M query and you create reports and they're good and they do a lot of what you need to do. That's that's absolutely appropriate for for that scenario. As you start growing though, you and you do have databases involved and you do start having some of those things you absolutely have to consider scalability um if you if you take that spreadsheet orientated piece with it with maybe a database and it's basically built with a whole load of dax that you've learned on the fly and query stuff you start adding more data to that you start trying to grow out the model a bit more it's going to start falling, falling apart very quickly and you know, I think I think there's the realization in the industry now that, or at least outside in the outside of the industry, I should say that 
this isn't a lot of people in the past used to say, oh, Power BI is not good then. So well, they're starting to realize that, well, no, it, it can just be built bad, <laughs> you know, or built well. Um, and so you have to start considering those things. So when you do get to those huge companies, ETL and, and the data engineering really becomes the largest and most key part of a Power BI, of a Power BI report development because it's huge um because you do all that stuff right your report is going to work when you've got millions and millions and millions of rows and a lot of ways to slice dice and a lot of different ways of perspectives on, on measures you have to build it well on the back end otherwise there is no reports so the the, the, the way the way that eve that evolves um from small mid-size and, and and enterprise is really tangible on, on how a lot of these things get put together so again, when you're looking for that Power BI developer, I mean, what, if, what are you looking for them to do and, and how do you apply it to the size of a company you are and where you should be at, at, at that point? Oh uh, yeah, okay. So DBA, this is going back to the roles part. You know, fundamentally, when you think of a roles, you, you have your DBA. Um, I didn't roll into this very smoothly, I admit, but DBA, then you have the security side. Um, anyone in the, in the, the, as we've sort of talked about, that works with, with anything on his side, that security is, is, a, is a huge part, again, especially with the medical industry and all industries really, but medical is most tightly um, regulated along with the financial services that, that certainly don't have the, the, the flexibility that they, that they used to. Um, infrastructure, a huge part because it's not just um, I've created a database, I built Power BI on top of it, is who's created that database? Who's sizing that database? Is it going through a data factory, data, um, data lake? Is it a data lake house where it combines all those wonderful things? Is it, um, and then is it on premise? Is it in the cloud? Infrastructure becomes a huge piece of it. And then sort of, Project manager, it's a role that, that helps dictate and coordinate all of these things and, and does a lot of that work in order to get the requirements through to the, to the, to the, to the report person. And the architect, they build the stuff, business analyst, Q&A, back to DBA. So when you look at the cycle of, of a project, of a report build, of all these things, these are all elements of it. These are all just pieces that, that, that come together for the, for the largest companies in particular in order to create your ecosystem. Now, every company is going to have a flavor of all of these things um, and, and roles for all of these things, but that's ultimately your circle. So in summary, the facets of a Power BI developer, basically just um, tabulating all these pieces together. Um, the workspace management, the visualization, how you apply them to roles, it's all laid out. This just sort of summarizes sort of everything we've just said and, and into those different pieces. So it's at this time that I am about coming to the end and I asked the question of, what you got, any Q&A? Excellent. That means I've taught you everything you need to know, and there's no question. <laughs> there's a lot of information to uh, digest there. There is. Um, I'm good at I'm good at doing that without stopping and just going straight into it. Um, but yeah, I mean, from a discussion standpoint, you know, I know not everyone's going out and looking in the industry, and obviously I've cherry picked some of those job those job postings, but. Um, it is it is a strange industry so i don't know if anyone anyone here does hiring um i don't know if anyone does um like manages a team finding finding the skill sets and understanding people's worth and people's value and their perceived worth and their perceived value is becoming increasingly difficult because there's I mean, back, in, back in the day you know we could hire we could interview someone and say well you know 
some of the classic things do do matter. So have you done architecting before? How many years have you been doing this stuff? Because not because um, you know with with SQL, for example, it doesn't matter if you know every single piece of syntax available. If you've only been doing it a year, you haven't come across many scenarios on how you can pivot the code that you know in order to to work with the experience that you've great you you've gained and to do a lot of that that sort of um, less linear types of thinking. So experience does matter in these things. What's happening in the industry at the moment is you have people that have been in Power BI for two, three years asking for like astronomical salaries because you know they're 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 good at that part. But I, I think I think it's it's a strange conversation to have because they're very good at one part of it, but even when we look at the job postings, even if I was being flippant about them, there is still the element of understanding all those other pieces and it, and it's hard to get all of that knowledge and understanding in, in just a very bare two years of, of working with anything in particular. Now that's obviously a blanket statement, I'm not ignorant to that, but in general it's it's a, it's a tough market to be working through right now. I, I think part of the problem is that hiring managers don't know what they're looking for in, in like a Power BI role. So I think that doesn't help either. It doesn't. You know, when you get someone asking for 10 years of Power BI development skills, it, you know, they haven't, <laughs> and I've seen those, I've seen them as well. I mean, it, it happens with, even just with like .NET and stuff, you you have somebody that wants, you know, 20 years of .NET, you know, it's like, yeah. or the it's, newest uh, thing they want five years of. <laughs> if you want 20 years of .NET, then surely you're hiring the CIO or something. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or it doesn't exist either way but it's um 20 years of anything means you're probably one of the best guy now i don't know do you have any thoughts sam yeah so the reason for that uh, we actually had this discussion at a, at a previous meeting and oh. uh lo and behold there was actually a hiring manager that was uh, sitting in the group and he said well really the way it works is that he tells hr he's looking for a uh, a junior or a mid-level or a senior type developer and they automatically assign the year range of experience to that so oh, uh, even, okay. so he's looking for a mid-level um, or a senior .NET developer so HR for example will tack on 20 plus years of .NET experience or 25 years of, of .NET experience when clearly .NET hasn't been around for 25 years yeah right and so that that's where the mismatch happens <laughs> Interesting. You were going to say, Brad? No, I said that's interesting. I hadn't heard that angle before. So, yeah. So, a lot of times, you know, we look at organizations as if they're just one person, but in reality, there are multiple people working together. And sometimes that's where the disconnect happens, you know, as information uh, for a, uh, a job requirement is passed down from one person to the other. That's where the mismatch happens. Um, they look at the uh, you know, a senior level is having X number of years of experience when that product hasn't been around for that long. Yeah, that, that's, I, I, I broadly put that down to process personally. And, and, you know, process is the thing that hurts everyone the most in general, you know, because, um, you know, if there's, if there's the process of, well, give us the requirements, we'll write it up and put it out. I mean, part of the process you'd think would be to, okay, just read it over and then they'll just catch that basic stuff, give it a big circle and say, well, that's rubbish, but here's what you should put. And, and, and that, that conversation happened. Um, I'm, I'm a massive believer in, um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not the type to sit there and say you have to put everything into a process because that's just, it, it, it stifles things. It makes it mundane. But when it comes to, um, certainly data input in particular, and sort of anything external facing where a peer review could save a lot of, like a 20 minute peer review can save a lot of trouble in, in many, many scenarios. And and just sort of that, that, that process to make sure that just the basics are done is, um, it really gets things a lot further along. And it just saves, it can really save heartache and headaches at the, at the point where that, that comes happen, that happens. Absolutely. You know, I, I could be on my high horse all day. I'm, 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 a, I'm about as bad as it comes with most things, you know. 
like I said, I, I, I designed the, the initial iteration of this of this uh, presentation in two hours, the day it was going to be presented. So it's uh, we all have our things, you know, and, uh, right. and that's why we don't like manually input data, isn't it? So. No, it's definitely a um, very interesting summary and uh, a, a good way to sum up all the different um, areas, uh, as you had mentioned, the length and the breadth of the uh, Power BI system. Yeah, well, if, uh, if you've got any questions, I'm, I'm here now. Or I think my, oh, hang on. I think I did put my email on there. Feel free to reach out. Um, feel free for any of that stuff. Um, and go from there, just because. I, I really am uh, a believer in, you know, I, I know I'm not local, but uh, one thing I do uh, have done is when when there's uh, people in locally who I'll just sit down and have a drink and we'll just debate this stuff. We've even thought about creating a podcast where we have a couple of drinks and just come up with just <laughs> ridiculous things, but uh, probably shouldn't do that. That's really professional. And that's why, that's why I'm not an MVP, Sam. <laughs> so it's, um, but uh but yeah, I've done the same virtually. I've got a, a, a rather obnoxious whiskey collection, so that's generally what I go to and, and have a conversation. So feel free at any point. Gotcha. Thank you, George. Um, right. anyone, anyone else with questions or comments for George? No, thank you. I thought this was a, a nice overview. Yep, I agree. Excellent. Likewise. Very good. All right, so uh, if you look over in the chat window, you'll see that there's a couple links that are listed there. As soon as my paste option works correctly. All right, let's try that again. Amazing, after all these years of experience, cut and paste still tends to elude me at times. All right, so in the chat window, you have a few links and uh, we'll go through those in just a little bit. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. And All right, so for resources, uh, the recording of the presentation will be edited and uploaded uh, within a few days. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel to get upload notifications whenever a new video is posted. And the link for that is posted in the chat window. Uh, in addition, we'll discuss some tech events of upcoming uh, user groups and, and conferences. And those will be uh, posted on my blog at samnasser.blogspot.com. And then lastly, uh, the feedback evaluation. So we can provide George some feedback regarding tonight's presentation. The form is available at the link listed there as well as in the chat window. So regarding events and uh, what's coming up, uh, within the user group community on May 19th is the Glugnet or the Great Lakes user group uh, that meets every third Thursday. So it's gonna be on May 19th. And then every fourth Thursday is the Cleveland C-Sharp VB.net user group. Uh, and that meets uh, every fourth Thursday. And then on June 8th is the next meeting of the Azure Cleveland user group, this group. We currently don't have a speaker lined up yet. However, the meeting is scheduled and the speaker will be found hopefully by then. So uh, the cycle will continue. As far as conferences, on May 21st is the Tech Forum community that's held over in Bangladesh. That is a free uh, event that's gonna be held. It's gonna contain a variety of different topics related to Azure and BI. Uh, and you can check them out over on meetup.com with the link listed there on the slide. And then May 24th through the 25th is Microsoft Builds. So that is a two day conference of all things Microsoft. Uh, and the link for that is mybuild.microsoft.com. And now, and all these events and links will be posted on my blog in just a little bit. One of the things that we always like to do is to discuss job openings. Uh, Tech Systems always has jobs posted at techsystems.com slash IT jobs. But in addition, we always like to ask who's hiring. So let me open up the floor. Anyone currently hiring at their place of employment? I do not know if we have any more open positions right now or not. I would okay. have to check on that. No problem. But if you care to divulge your employer, you're more than welcome to. Sure, it's it's on shift. Um, okay, we're downtown Cleveland. Uh, 
I'm sure you can find them on onshift.com. I'm sure there's like a um, couriers or something there on the website. Absolutely. We'll take a look at that. Very good. Anyone else? Yeah, we're always hiring. Um, mid level at the moment we're looking for sort of mid level developers. Um, um experience doesn't necessarily have to be the most the, the way we approach it is um if you have a if if your personality is there then um that's not something that can be taught technology can be so that's that's how we approach that but yeah we're we're, we're in need of a couple of bodies coming up both um b2b um independent and probably one full time whatever whatever people are looking for very nice um so mid-level so that's uh, what 25 30 years of .NET, is that right <laughs> and 10 years of power out yeah. there <laughs> all right very good do you have that link available george you can share it sure i'm fine <laughs> we're generally pretty open it's uh linkedin um but i will find um the window we can use to sign up with i'll send that now excellent very good anyone else hiring I know my company is. Uh, we're based out of Denver, but they mostly do all remote. It's called Coal Fire. We mostly hire cloud engineers or pen testers. So is it mostly of a, is it a security type position? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we work in um, Azure and AWS, mostly working with people trying to get to um, FedRAMP. Just a security go. model for the federal government. Okay. And are you looking for contracting work full time? Full time. Um, they're a contracting company. Let's see. Very good. So, in a nutshell, we have Cloudfire, OnShift, and Fulton Analytics all looking to hire. Very good. On the opposite side of that token, anyone who's looking for work? Not at the moment. Okay. That could change at any time. <laughs> Very true. It's a weird world we live in, right? You're not kidding. <laughs> Absolutely. The email right, link so, there, if any, if any of you say that change your mind at one point, it's all good. Right. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for sharing the link, George. Okay. So. In closing, uh, my contact information if needed, my email is snasser at nistechnologies.com. You can also find me on Twitter at Sam Nasser. And tech events as well as uh, technical articles are posted on my blog, samnasser.blogspot.com. And you can always find me on LinkedIn. And I invite you to connect with me on LinkedIn as well. So with that, uh, thank you to George and thank you to all the attendees. And um, hope you all have a good night and look forward to seeing you next month.